Cool. How you doing, Portland? Yeah. 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 You guys like living here? It's a cool place yeah. to be. Absolutely. Thank you. I'm not originally from here, though. You know, I'm still adjusting. Portland's a very different place. I'm from Philadelphia. You know, Philadelphia, cold, can be kind of grimy, dangerous. Basically, what I'm saying is, white people, it wasn't always this digestible. <laughs> <laughs> Something happens, though. You move out to the West Coast, you step off the plane, fall into a pile of nose rings, <laughs> spill some bleach in one side of your head, never look back. But no, I have, like, I have weird West Coast habits now, though, you know? I've adopted these. For example, I drink kombucha now. <laughs> Wait for it. I don't just drink kombucha. I believe in kombucha. <laughs> okay, right? Like, I don't know what probiotics means. I don't know if I can spell probiotics, but it's on the label. I drink this shit in public. People respect me now. <laughs> Right? I go for a walk down Hawthorne Avenue. It's just applause, okay? <laughs> Thunderous applause. There's children looking up at their mothers. They go, mommy, mom, what is that? I go, son, it's a man with healthy poops. Okay. <laughs> what else? No, I shop at these bougie West Coast supermarkets. You know what I'm talking about? Whole Foods, New Seasons, as I like to call them, the left arm of gentrification. But, no, I need to stop. I know I need to stop. And look, here's how you know if you're shopping in one of these supermarkets. Go to the cereal aisle. If you recognize anything. <laughs> Not that bougie. Not that bougie, it turns out, right? Supermarket I go to, you remember how when you were a kid, the cereal aisle, a magical place full of cartoon characters and games and marshmallows. The CEO of New Season said, no, we're off that. Okay, get it all out of here. We're gonna have brown, sad labels that you gotta squint <laughs> to understand, okay? Actual vitamins and whole grains, that's it, okay? The most expensive thing they have where I shop is just a bag of wheat. Comes with a shovel, says, here, you figure it out, dickhead. <laughs> have fun at breakfast, okay? Oh, uh, no, but, um, when I did move out here, my mom came to visit me real quickly. And, you know, I love hanging out with my mom. I'm getting older now. I don't know about y'all, but I drink too much. I finally got to the point where I can share my passion with my family. <laughs> so me and my mom got drunk together. By that I mean, I got drunk under the fucking table by my mom. <laughs> Started telling me about her past loves. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I found out that her words, not mine, before she met my dad, my mom used to date a tall, beautiful, handsome, Australian millionaire with a fucking boat. <laughs> what the fuck, mom? <laughs> right, look, I don't dislike my dad. My dad's a great guy, okay? He's just not an Australian millionaire who used to bang my mom on a yacht. <laughs> you know what he is? He's a 5'6 former postal employee who's into two things. The Lord Jesus Christ and reruns of the Andy Griffith Show. <laughs> you know what he's not into? Having a fucking boat. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, that's right. No, it's like growing up, you wanna look up to your dad, dear old dad, papa, if you will. <laughs> How can, you, how can you look up to a man whose work uniform doesn't include long pants? <laughs> you know how heartbreaking it is to wake up on a snow day full of excitement and have to watch your dad stare out into a high, icy hellscape as he puts on a pair of short shorts? <laughs> right? Like, no, I wanna look up to him, but like, Gotta come home every day, watch him sitting there, watching his little ass TV <laughs> on land. <laughs> Just breathing like a broke nigga. <laughs> Just saying, Mom, what the f I could have inherited an accent, <laughs> okay? Or at least like a big ass knife. <laughs> Cr 
spiky. Instead, I inherited being under six feet tall. Which brings me to my next point. I'm sick of tall people, okay? I'm done with them. I'm tired of, the, I'm tired of their self-confidence. Tired of the heels on their shoes. Tired of how they're driving up the price of long pants for me, right? Look, it's not a jealousy thing. Got my own stuff going on down here. Can still get light up Skechers in my size. Can fit into a Mazda Miata, it's a great ride. Um, yeah. I can get a car bed. Ladies, I'm not saying I have a car bed, but you know. If I wanted one, your boy's got options. <laughs> Plus, like, when society collapses and all you brittle bone savages are running around slaughtering one another for warm blankets and stuff, me and my whole squad will be snug as a bug under one large Rug. beach towel. Absolutely, yeah, you heard it? <laughs> It's like a life hack. Short people, cheap blankets, absolutely. No, I'm just, I just have no sympathy for tall people. I'm tired of them coming to me with their problems. Oh, the sun is in my eyes. <laughs> uh, I'm not buying it, okay? If you can dunk a basketball, you don't know real sadness, okay? No one finishes a tomahawk jam with a stank look on their face, okay? If you can jump that high, you can jump right over whatever's bothering you. <laughs> <laughs> The joke is called punching up. <laughs> oh man. Can I be, can I, can I come clean with all y'all? Can we be real yeah. for a second? Yeah. Absolutely. I'm sorry, but I heckled another performer recently while they were doing their thing. Yeah, I know. It was a magician though, so it only kind of counts. <laughs> yeah. Now that you know the whole story, I'll Tarantino it, bring you back to the beginning, right? Scene, me, asleep in my room time, 11.30. I was awoken by a bump in the night, so I rushed downstairs to find out what's going on. I opened the front door. What do I find but my friends and a magician on my porch. He's doing magic with gusto. <laughs> now you may not know this about me yet, but I don't fuck with magic, right? I don't read thick leather bound books. Definitely don't read them backwards, okay? I don't play as mages in video games. Look, I'm at a point in my life where I don't even trust improv jazz. <laughs> so, back to me and Nosferatu over here. He's doing his thing, he's doing his little tricks. It's cute, whatever. My friends are entertained, you gotta understand. I have very dumb friends, right? <laughs> they think it's cool, but I know what a magician really is. It's a stranger at my house, late at night, making stuff disappear. <laughs> it's not a good look on paper, right? So I told him, I'm like, listen, not, look, you gotta go, Gandalf, right? I get out of here. And at this point, people usually pull back. They're like, oh, Thomas, why are you being so mean to the magician? Okay, I get it, that's a hard job. Gotta memorize all those tricks, keep that suit dry cleaned, all while simultaneously disappointing everyone who's ever loved you. Okay. Plus, look, I'm, look I, I get it, right? I'm a regular guy, just like everybody else. I put my pants on one leg at a time, and I love a good game of peekaboo. Okay? Object permanence is a motherfucker. <laughs> Truth be told, though, I just, I want to like magic, but I can't trust it. I got trust issues, right? Where does the, where does the trick end? You know, where's the line? How do I know it's over, okay? Anybody here ever take acid? You get to that point where you're like, I guess that's it. I guess this is never gonna end. Yeah, this is how my life is now. People look like walruses and I'm never leaving this beach. That's cool, right? And if I'm being completely honest, I'm not entirely sure that all old white dudes aren't just one really powerful wizard. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave you guys with this. Do we have any college graduates in the audience? Hey, yeah, yeah, college graduates out there at home? Well, college is a waste of time. Okay, you've wasted so much time and money. It's okay, I've been there too. It's not your fault. It's their fault, okay? College is a waste of time because they're giving out too many degrees, saturating the market, right? 
You can get a master's degree in something that nobody should be wasting their time mastering. I have a friend getting a master's degree in theoretical mathematics. <laughs> theoretical mathematics. I'm pretty sure that's just guessing, Doug. <laughs> getting a master's degree and taking a stab at it. <laughs> oh man, uh, what's your favorite TV shows? A lot of favorite TV fans out here? Yeah? There's not a lot of TV I can get behind. You know, there's not a lot of things I watch on TV. Be completely honest, you know, it's not it's not because I think I'm better than anybody. Honestly, it's because I'm dumb. Okay, I can't differentiate between the magical world of TV and real life. Like you know how fucked up I was when I found out Will Smith was not royalty. <laughs> right? And TV breakups, they're not realistic. Okay, you see somebody get broken up with on TV. How does it work? Immediately, they've got five days off work for some reason. <laughs> Got on the freshest cotton pajamas I've ever seen. They're drinking expensive whiskey out of a glass. That's not heartbreak, okay? I've been broken up with, y'all have been broken up with, we know how it really is. Real heartbreak is wine-soaked boxes, documentaries about stuff you didn't know you were interested in, okay? Way too many cans of Mike's Hard Lemonade, straight out of the can, okay? Notice I did not say anything about time off work. <laughs> That's because I was there the entire time, okay? <laughs> was I late? Maybe. Was I hungover? Let's not talk about it. Did I smell like a college kid's only towel? <laughs> sure. Okay, but I was there underperforming with clockwork precision. <laughs> right. No, but I do love that show Atlanta. Yeah. Guys like, yeah, Donald Glover is such a talented person. I watch Atlanta every week when it comes out. I watch it with my, one of my best friends, another big black dude, you know, same age as me. Now, naturally, as black men around the same age, certain things are off limit to us, you know, like hugging your dad and admitting you're more of a cat person. <laughs> okay. But Atlanta is a great show. Sometimes it can get a little emotional. Okay, so we were watching a particular episode, got, things got intense, and something special happened. I reached for the remote, and he reached for the remote. <laughs> then I reached a little bit more. Then we both grabbed the remote and went to put on a game of NBA basketball. Because, like I said, two black men, same generation, certain can't show emotion, unless someone's getting dunked on. Okay? Those are the rules, I don't make them. It needs to be a stiff European man having his career ruined in order for us to show joy. It's like an IV drip of racial justice. These kids are gonna be so hungry next year. All right, thank you guys, I'm Thomas Hunt.